Catherine Carlyle is a struggling actress trying to make it big in Hollywood. But as of now, she's out of work and is living her life as a stay-at-home wife. She's living with her rich husband Richard in their luxurious home in Laurel Canyon. Richard is a successful Hollywood producer who she met while working on a short movie. Catherine insists that she wants to get roles on her own without her husband's connections, and Richard also does not attempt to help her. This doesn't mean that he neglects her, but because of Richard's busy schedule, their married life is starting to become lonely. Most of the time, Catherine's left behind all alone in this big house. In between recording the video for the audition, she cleans the house by herself while a helper is hired to do the gardening. Catherine wishes their neighbor, Anderson, would soon sell the unoccupied house so that she can have a new neighbor to spend time with. One day, Catherine gets a call from L.A. Bloom Gardening Company informing her that the usual gardener is no longer in service as the police have arrested him. So the man tells her that a replacement gardener is on his way. And within no time, Ben, the attractive new gardener, is right at her doorstep ringing the doorbell. Next, Catherine takes Ben around the house where his expertise is required. She tells him that he could start working right away, but notices that he doesn't have any tools right now. However, Ben tells her that he'll start his job immediately the next day. As he's about to leave, he notices that Catherine is struggling with the door. It turns out that the door got locked accidentally when she came out to show Ben around. Catherine starts panicking and claims that she has an important email to send, so Ben offers to help her to open the locked door. After a few tweaks, he unlocks the door with the help of two wires. Once inside, Catherine quickly sends the email, and before Ben leaves, she asks him if he knows her gardener Jorge. Ben tells her that he does not know the guy personally, but knows that he was recently arrested. During dinner, Catherine complains about the wobbling table, but Richard doesn't seem to care. Afterward, with a movie playing in the background and Richard busy reading a movie script, Catherine asks if they can light a fire. Being a gentleman, Richard volunteers to turn it on, which requires turning on the gas switch at the garage. Richard is in the garage, but he doesn't notice a figure standing in the dark. Sometime later, Catherine puts on sexy lingerie before bed, but unfortunately for her, Richard is fast asleep. The next day, Ben arrives with the tools and points at the ivy plant that he wants to work on at first, and Catherine has no problem with it. Ben tells her that rather than being a mere gardener, he wants to be recognized as a landscape architect by his clientele. Meanwhile, Catherine calls her acquaintance to ask if there's any role available for her. In response, her friend tells her that she should enjoy her free time while she can. Next, Catherine offers Ben some lemonade and the two begin talking. She thanks him for helping her unlock the door the previous day. Being curious, Ben asks her what was so important that she had to send it so urgently. Catherine replies that she was auditioning for a movie role, but didn't get the job, unfortunately. She tells Ben that she's an aspiring actress, but up until now, she's only worked on a few short films and ads. Ben also opens up that besides being a landscape architect, he's a rapper having a real passion for music. Catherine spontaneously makes a comment that he's quite the renaissance man, but this offends Ben for some reason. However, she has no intention of making fun of him, so she asks him to sing a few verses. The weather has been pretty humid, and Ben has been feeling sweaty and sticky by working in the sun. He playfully tells Catherine that he'd owe her one if she let him jump into the pool. As soon as he gets her cue, Ben removes his t-shirt and belt, tosses them aside, and plunges into the water. Then throughout the day, the shirtless Ben is working in the garden, while Catherine is busy practicing her acting. Later, she calls him in for some handyman work and requests him to fix a wobbly table and a broken down car. As Ben is pulling off the physical work, Catherine watches him intently. Ben seems like a polite gentleman, so Catherine asks him to help her practice the lines and record the video for her audition. After recording the video, Catherine asks his opinion about her acting. Ben honestly does not have any idea, and in all sincerity, he tells her that he finds it corny, not her acting, but the script. When she offers him some money for this help, Ben feels offended and walks out. Catherine chases after him and apologizes to him for being insensitive. Ben tells her that he's always been a poor loser, but seeing her not taking care of all the beautiful things that she's been blessed with is pissing him off. He admits to going to jail, and she can judge him as everyone else does. And despite his hard work, he always remains invisible in others' eyes. Ben mentions that even taking a dip into a private property is almost unimaginable for a working-class man like him. Later, Catherine picks up his belt and ties it around her neck, but she can't get the image of Ben working in her garden shirtless out of her mind. At night, Catherine tries to take off Richard's clothing to initiate intimacy, but Richard informs her that he's flying to San Francisco the next day to meet an actor there. Before heading out, she tells him about Jorge being detained. Catherine wants them to do something for Jorge, but Richard disagrees with her, saying that they might be vouching for a criminal. That night, Catherine is out with Richard and the actors, but she seems distracted. 
Even after they go to bed, she couldn't fall asleep. The next day, there's loud music coming from Anderson's supposedly empty house. Ben shows up inside Catherine's house from the side door and alerts her about it being left open. He calls out Ed's name and tells him to lower the volume of the speaker. Ben states that Ed Hogate has bought Anderson's place and further explains that they'd met each other the previous day while he was working. When Catherine inquires what he's doing there on his day off, Ben tells her that he wants to take her out to brunch to thank him for the job. But rather than going out, Catherine decides to invite their new neighbor, Ed, and cook them a couple burgers. Next, Ed comes over and Ben introduces them to each other. She asks Ed how he got his hands on Anderson's place as the price was too high. Ed tells her that he works in Silicon Valley and gives her his card. But soon, his non-stop tech blabbering bores her and Catherine excuses herself to prepare the burger. Meanwhile, Ben comes inside the kitchen to give her a hand. He reveals that he used to be a diner cook up in Fresno. He asks about her marriage and asks why Richard didn't help her with her career. Catherine simply tells him that she doesn't want to use her husband's connection for landing a role. To make her feel better, Ben tells her that he watched her short film last night and claims that he really liked it. She then leaves him in charge of the kitchen and excuses herself to get changed for the grilling event. In the next scene, Catherine comes down where Ben and Ed are drinking beer. She then hands him the belt he left the previous day. The three then get together and start chatting, and soon enough, the burger party turns into a drinking and dancing party. Now, Ben and Catherine are dancing to classical music while Ed is drowning himself in alcohol and looking at them dance. Grooving to the tune of the music, beguiled Ben and Catherine kiss each other passionately and they almost forget about the presence of the third person in the room. Pulling herself apart from Ben, Catherine seems to regret it. And in the background, Ben and Ed seem to argue about something. Now, Catherine wants Ben to go after Ed to avoid potential trouble and she also has to pick up Richard from the airport. However, Ben tells her that there's still some time left before Richard's arrival and asks her to have a drink with him. Slowly, Ben leads the intoxicated Catherine to the upstairs bedroom. At this point, the movie rewinds to two days prior where Duke and Oaks, two thugs, come down to California to hold up the gas station owner for drinks and a pack of cigarettes. Mind that Duke is the real name of Ben who has appeared in Catherine's house as a gardener, and the real Ed has been silenced by these thugs while Oates is pretending to be Ed. They see Catherine for the first time in the same gas station driving her almost broken down car. The real Ed Hogate in his 1970 Buick Electra comes to fill his car. At first, they approach Ed pretending that their own car is broken down and tell him that they're also heading to the Beverly Hills Hotel. They then forcefully enter his vehicle and threaten to follow Catherine's car. After making sure that Ed won't open his mouth, they go their own way. Walking for a while, they spot Catherine's white convertible. Since they can't go directly and get what they want, they sneak around and see a house with the lights switched on in broad daylight. They walk around this house and find a window upstairs that looks directly into Catherine's pool. When they notice Jorge the gardener, Duke comes up with a plan of getting him fired from his job. He goes through Catherine's mailbox to find out Richard's name, and by using his name, Duke calls the police and reports a fake complaint against Jorge. Their plan works wonderfully as the police come to apprehend him. Next, he makes Oates call Catherine, pretending to be someone from the LA Bloom Gardening, and informs her about the arrival of the new gardener. After successfully fooling the innocent woman, he pays Catherine a visit. That night, they sneak into Catherine's garage just so they could sit in that white convertible. Just then, Richard comes in to switch on the gas, but thankfully for the thugs, he doesn't see them. Now, to be proper gardeners, they need the tools. So the two roam around the neighborhood to see what they could find. Just then, using his Spanish, Duke successfully borrows the gardening tools from a Spanish-speaking fellow. After that, Oates strangely keeps on observing when Duke and Catherine come close. Later, he confronts Duke and asks if he's falling in love with her. Duke tells him that she makes no difference to him and questions if he wants her dead or alive. That evening, after sending Oates to return the truck, he watches Catherine's short film. And the final piece of the puzzle is the day Catherine invites her new neighbor, Ed Hogate. Previously, when Duke and Oates were arguing about something, it was actually about Duke lying to Oates about having a safe in the house. Duke tells them that he would let him have her first if he stops messing this up, and then Oates walks out. And back to where we left before. Duke takes Catherine to her bedroom, and she's still conscious that it's her and Richard's bedroom. But before Duke takes her somewhere else, he comes clean about Oates not working in Silicon Valley and wanting to have her. He confesses his love for her when she's not even in her proper senses. Then he takes Catherine and carries her to the empty Anderson house. Meanwhile, Richard is safely landed at the airport. He tries calling Catherine, but since he can't get through, he makes his way to the house. Meanwhile, in Anderson's house, Duke puts her in bed and signals Oates to proceed. As he leaves the room, Oates gets on top of her and threatens to kill her if she moves. But Oates is just a coward who does not even have the courage to harm her. 
he lets the woman go, but Duke does not spare her when she comes out of the house. He slaps Catherine, making her fall hard on the ground, and Oates comes to stop his colleague, telling him not to hit her. They both fall into the pool, and during the tussle, Duke stabs Oates, leaving him to die. In his final words, Oates apologizes to Duke for not being able to kill her. By this time, Catherine enters her house and tries to call the police, but Duke pulls out the telephone cord. Desperate to save her life, she runs outside and sees Oates struggling in the pool of his blood. In an attempt to hide from Duke, Catherine enters the pool and hides under Oates' body, but he starts to alert Duke. She then turns his body upside down so that his face remains underwater and holds on until he dies. Moments later, when Richard comes home, he sees the messed up state of his house and finds Catherine by the pool. He tells her to run when Duke comes from the other side. As Duke and Richard are having a fist fight outside, Catherine runs inside the house and pulls out the gun that's displayed on the wall. She comes outside with a loaded gun and shoots Duke multiple times before she returns to Richard's arm. A few months have passed after this horrific incident and Catherine has made it big in Hollywood. She's no longer a side character in movies as the film crew gathers around to applaud her at the shooting wrap-up.